How would you know if you're truly wise? All sorts of people think they're wise in their own eyes, but God has something very particular in mind that really is wisdom. It's wisdom in regard to him. It's wisdom in regard to living. And the book of Proverbs from the Old Testament is part of God's wisdom literature. And it really is about the wise life, the wise life and how to live it. And we're going to be looking at that in our devotions for the next little while. We're just going to look at the introduction today uh, to the book in chapter 1, verse 1. There, there, there's several books of wisdom in the Bible. Uh, there's uh, books like Proverbs, which explain how it is that God has made the world and, and what right living, and there's kind of certain cause and effect built into creation. But it's more than that. It's also about your relationship with God in this world. I mean, God's created us in the beginning to to worship him, to love him, to follow him, to relate to him. Uh, and, and he set us up as rulers of creation, have dominion and, and, uh, and, and take care of his world. And so here is the blending of the two together. Now, it's not all so straightforward because there's other books of wisdom as well that kind of bring account of, say, the Psalms, uh, all sorts of uh, books, of, you know, songs about the, uh, the emotion of living in this world and the highs and the lows that sometimes the wicked do prosper, but in the end, they will be judged. And, and you know, there's times for, for glorying and being happy. And some of the Psalms about weddings and all sorts of things about uh, repentance and of when uh, caught in sin, all, all kinds of reflections there. Ecclesiastes, talking about meaning and purpose in this world. Can you find it with or without God? Uh, the Song of Songs, it's a, it's a strange book. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's a love song. Uh, and, and as a love song, it really is about this help outpouring of emotion and the joy that God brings into relationship when it flourishes. And, and so there's a really lots to learn in there, uh, even though it's a little bit all over the place. Uh, and so there's some of the books of wisdom. We're looking at the book of Proverbs and we pick it up, chapter 1, in verse 1, where he speaks for just a few verses about what the, what the point of the book is. Let's have a look. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for learning wisdom and discipline, for understanding insightful sayings, for receiving prudent instruction in righteousness, justice and integrity, for teaching shrewdness to the inexperienced, knowledge and discerning to a young man. Let a wise person listen and increase learning, and let a discerning person obtain guidance. For understanding a proverb or a parable, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. It's interesting, he is... Uh, this introduction by Solomon, uh, the son of David. Remember that David was the man after God's own heart. The first king of Israel was Saul. He'd been set up in rebellion against God. Uh, we were looking at our devotions a little while ago and God had rejected him and he'd chosen another. When he looked at the heart of this young man and said, that's a man after my own heart and anointed him as king. He didn't take power for many, many years. Uh, and so there was this awkward uh, 40 years or so while Saul was still the king, but David had received the kingship. And so there was tension and, uh, and it was only in Saul's death that uh, David came to power. His son Solomon was a man of peace. Uh, his name means that as well. Uh, he's the man of peace. Uh, he didn't have to fight the fights that his dad David had to fight. He got to rule and he, when he was given uh, the kingship, uh, God said, well, ask me for one thing and it'll be yours. And he said, I want to be wise, to rule with wisdom. And, and most of what he did was very, very wise. And, and he was a man of great learning and people came from all over the world to hear his wisdom. And in one sense, it was fulfilling the, the promises that God made to Abraham to be a blessing to all the nations. As you see the Queen of Sheba and, and everyone else coming to listen to this King of Israel share his wisdom about life, about God, about everything. Now, he was led astray 
uh, because he, uh, he married lots of foreign women and adopted their gods and so there's all sorts of chaos there but that doesn't mean there's not lots to learn from him God did grant him wisdom and we're going to see that this book is all about that and he says at the start it's, it, this is this whole book is my reflections on life for learning for discipline uh, for being wise and getting ahead but he says that the starting point of all wisdom is not where anyone in the world would find it or start make it as their starting point and that is you've got to sort things out with god the truly wise life the truly wise person is someone who understands god verse 7 the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and discipline you cannot live wisely if you do not understand god and it's interesting that it talks about the fear of the Lord. It's something that's been very contentious throughout Christian history in talking about what is this fear of the Lord. Is it just a sort of, you know, heartfelt respect for someone who's wonderful? Yeah, and so it's, it's just this awe that you have. And, and certainly that is there. But I think it's more than that in the scriptures. God is awesome. He is amazing. He is our creator. He is our judge. He does amazing things and he does terrifying things uh, throughout history and there's lots to be afraid of now we'll learn in the new testament that perfect love drives our fear as god turns his wrath away through the sun but it's right to start with the fear of the lord in the hymn amazing grace we sing god's grace first taught my heart to fear and then my fears relieved right it's actually god's kindness to teach you to to fall down in front of him knowing that he holds your destiny in his hands that he can save or destroy you that he can do anything he's he's uh, terrifyingly powerful uh, and but he's also wonderfully caring that's why his grace teaches you to fear before it relieves your fears with the gospel of hope and righteousness but the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge because if there is no fear of God before their eyes, before our eyes, uh, we won't care what he says. We won't care what he thinks about. We won't care about how his world works. We won't care about anything from him. And yet our destiny is in his hands. And so that is, has to be the starting point of wisdom. One of the things that most people don't do is think about the long term. Uh, and yet God says that the wise life is all about thinking about long term right thinking about in relation to him certainly but if you know that the end is of in your whole point of life is that you'll either be with God or you won't be with God in eternity in heaven or in hell then you'll want to to, to organize your life around that right and so the fear of the Lord really is the beginning of knowledge but he says it's only fools that despise wisdom and discipline right if you turn any other way if you don't take into account God you don't take into account where you're going to end up you don't think about where you stand with him he says you're going to make the wrong decisions it's going to you know destroy you you might get ahead for a time in this life like the psalms and ecclesiastes you know talk about but it's meaningless it's pointless it's futile in the end because you can't escape and so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But notice also that in the introduction, he says that wise, this is, with wisdom and the wise person starts at this point, right, in relation to God. But he says you always got to keep on growing. You're not wise if you don't. And so as he talks about these Proverbs, he says, let a wise person listen and increase learning and let a discerning person obtain guidance. That we start with God, we never move away from that, um, and we start with the fear of the Lord, but we, we and we don't move away from that. But we do learn about His grace and love and friendship and and fatherhood and all signs and things as well. But uh, there's always more to learn and to grow in. The person who thinks they have arrived and and doesn't want to to grow in their knowledge of God and don't want to th grow in their understanding of the world and stuff is a person who has let go of wisdom. And so a wise person will keep listening, particularly to God's word, and they will keep putting their life in his hands and they'll keep seeking to understand. 
And so I want to encourage you today as we read through this book together, or start with the fear of the Lord. If you haven't got that worked out, as something to do. You could go back to the devotions on what is a Christian and so on if you haven't figured that out yet. But if you have figured it out, then commit yourself to serving Him, to pleasing Him, to understanding Him, and to keep growing keep growing in your wisdom every day to be looking to see what else can I learn what else has God got to teach me what else can I do and what makes sense in this life when you know God and you know his power majesty wonder love and his awesome fearful judgment as well what do you do to organize your life around the fear of the Lord that is uh, something that's a continual question and we've got to keep pushing ourselves in it so why don't we pray now that god would help us uh, to to be wise to fear him and to live his way to keep growing and learning father we want to thank you for the power of your word and we thank you that you do give us the way of true wisdom the world does not understand it and they live in foolishness and rebellion against you Father, help us not to be like that. We pray that you, the fear of the Lord would be the, the starting point of our whole life, that we would know that our destiny is in your hands, that it is a fearsome thing to fall into the hands of the living God uh, and to not uh, rebel against you, to resent you, to dismiss you, to be bitter against you, but help us to love you, particularly as you have given us your grace and love in the Lord Jesus which takes away that fear as he bears our curse. But Father, help us to always come back to this starting point. And, uh, and we pray that our life will be filled with the awe of you. And we will glorify you in everything. And we pray, please, that we would not give up on learning, that we'd want to push ourselves to keep growing and developing as your children, as people in this world, as uh, people who know you, and we pray that, that would come out in all of our relationships. Please guide us in wisdom as we reflect on you and your ways and your purposes. And we pray that we would never forget the long view of what our eternal destiny is. And we pray that, that might shape us as Paul calls us in the New Testament. Help us to set our minds on things above where Christ is seated in the heavenly realms. And we pray, please, that that would transform each and every one of our days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.